Today's shoe of the day, I got the Yeezy 380 Calcite Glows. This shoe is definitely a shoe that is highly slept on, in my opinion. I think that these are absolutely fire. I think that the glow on these is one of the most insane glows I've ever seen on a sneaker before. And overall, I think people are really, really sleeping on them. All I can say is that the glow on these calcites is insanely, insanely amazing. Let's get into a quick look at the actual glow on these Calcite 380s. I'm gonna go ahead and put these into my ice box under the UV rays for just a couple of minutes, let them get a little bit of a charge, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn the lights off to see exactly what it looks like. So this is going to be an incredibly important part of the video for anybody that hasn't seen the glow on the Yeezy 380 Calcites. Is that how you pronounce it? Calcite? At any rate, they've been under the UV light for like, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes so these bitches about to glow like a motherfucker you so these things like they have a serious serious glow to them it's actually very very strong throughout the majority of the shoe not just the midsole and the outsole but actually the upper too you can see that the upper paneling is glowing pretty strongly that midsole glows like crazy but this is going to be a really really good reference point for when we are going to dye the uppers of these shoes as you might be able to tell the glow on these bad boys incredibly strong and that's one of the reasons why i absolutely love the shoe there's one one thing that I actually don't like about this though. You can tell that there are some sections that do not glow on the uppers. And the fact that that knit pattern is still the same color as the rest of the shoe, I think is something that could definitely be upgraded. You can see in front of me here, I got a whole bunch of dyes and my intention is to go through and dye the non-glowing portion of these Yeezy 380 calcites. It's gonna be tough. It's a project that I haven't been able to find any sort of information on at this point in time. So I haven't found anybody else Else that in any sort of like videos or Instagram posts has done a dye of these quite yet. So it's going to be a new process, at least from my awareness. What I'm gonna have to do to start off with is figure out which of my dyes I wanna use. I got four different kinds of RIT dyes for synthetic materials. I got the Kentucky Sky, the Tropical Teal. I also have the Frost Gray and the Royal Purple. I'm curious to see if I can actually mix these RIT synthetic dyes to make for a more appropriate color kind of combination when I'm going through and dyeing these Yeezy 380s. The first thing I wanna do is test out the dyes to see what they actually look like. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and test them out on an old t-shirt to see what the colors look like and see what sort of blend I wanna use when I'm dyeing my Yeezys here. Let's get into the color test and see where we're at with it. When color testing dyes, it's important to use a surface that's as close in color as the item that you're hoping to dye so you know how the dye will settle and what the color will look like. Now that I've let my dye settle into this t-shirt and I know exactly what the colors look like, it's about time that I get these Yeezys all prepped up. I'm gonna go ahead and get these laces off first and then we'll go ahead and prep the Yeezys by getting them uh, soaked with some tap water. The Yeezy Calcite Glows utilize the Infinity Lacing System. I didn't want laces to be on the shoes as I was dyeing them, so I decided to remove the Infinity Laces in exchange for the normal laces that are also included. Afterwards, I washed the shoes so that I could get them waterlogged. That way, when I applied the dye, the shoes would already be wet and the dye would not spread too much. Now I've got these things mostly prepped up and the last step is to put some sort of reinforcement inside the shoe. That way, when I'm going to actually dye the different sections, there's a nice top mesh and it's gonna make it a little bit easier to be a little bit more precise with the dyes that I'm gonna be using. What I'll be utilizing to help with the inside of the shoes here, these cool shoe trees that I got at Men's Warehouse. These are actually super useful to applying pressure internally in the shoe to help to maintain good structure. So this is gonna be a really important thing during the process. I'm also gonna utilize some towels underneath so then that way the dye won't spread. Let's check it out and see what that looks like. Utilizing shoe trees was an important part of my process to maintain the structure of the shoes. I also covered the shoe trees with washcloths to make sure that none of the dye would seep through onto my shoe trees or onto other parts of the sneaker that I didn't want to dye. 
All right, the shoes are stuffed, and now this is where it really gets interesting. We're gonna be getting down and actually dyeing these shoes now. We only get one shot at this, and it's definitely going to be a little bit challenging. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to paint these things in the dark, so knowing which parts of the shoe actually glow is a little bit tougher. And I've taken a few pictures that I'm gonna be displaying on the screen for a reference point, but at the end of the day, I know that even the smallest little mishap might make it so that these things don't glow quite as well. That's okay, because this is an experiment. We're gonna have some fun with it, but it also means that there is only a very slight margin for error, and there's a lot of careful work that's gonna be going into this for the next several minutes here. So let's get into that process and see what we can do and get in these things to have a cool dye. And I have the lovely Lola here. She is going to be working on these shoes today as well. Now again, the end goal is to dye all of the non-glowing parts on the uppers on this pair of Yeezy 380 Calcite Glows. So it's gonna be kind of an ombre from the top to bottom and a color shift from front to back. I'm gonna have to put a picture of the shoe glowing in the dark up on the television so then that way we have a point of reference so we try not to dye the portions of the shoe that actually glow when the lights are turned off. Normally, with RIT dyes, you actually submerge the article and you let it stay there, but unfortunately that would obviously dye the entire shoe and we're trying to do just little sections. Instead, got these fine pointed brushes that we're gonna be using to apply these dyes and hopefully get the best product we possibly can. It's gonna be a fun process. It's gonna be a very challenging process. Gotta learn how to do it, so here goes nothing. Throughout the dyeing process, I had a picture of the calcite glows on the television in the dark glowing. So I could tell which parts of the shoe didn't glow and therefore which parts of the shoe that I needed to dye. As I went through, I found that just dotting on the shoe rather than trying to drag the paintbrush was the most appropriate method in applying the dye to small areas. All right, gotta make this one quick because the phone is at 3% battery, so I might not even get a full video out of this one. Lola, what were your thoughts on the process? <laughs> it was a lot harder than anticipated. There was definitely a lot of strategy to it. For some reason, some colors were easier than others. I think it also had a lot to do with the brushes. You'll see there's a bit of bleeding. We had to like sort through with some colors. Um, it definitely doesn't blend as easy as like paint does, which is what I'm used to working with. Uh, the colors bled a ton more than I expected them to. I thought it was gonna be really, really easy to blend the dyes, and unfortunately that just wasn't the case. The light blue most definitely was the thinnest and spread the most, and uh, it was a little bit harder to kind of contain the specific areas. The dark blue was actually really, really nice and did not bleed all that much. I so. liked working with that the best. Um, you can see that there's a couple of spots that I need to touch up on the midsoles where unfortunately a little bit of dye got onto them. They turned out a lot better than I expected. When we first started to do this and the colors started to bleed, I was really, really worried that it just wasn't gonna work out. It wasn't gonna turn out good at all. They actually look halfway decent. They actually look like a cool pair you're gonna rock. Ask. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna wear these things when it's time. The next thing that I wanna do is let the dye set for a little bit. I'm gonna sit it in front of a fan and let everything kind of dry off. And then to really set the colors in place, these are gonna be rinsed underneath a really, really hot water bath for a couple of minutes to try and rinse out any sort of excess dye and try to set the colors in place. Then we will dye the laces, lace them up, and show you what the final product looks like. After drying a little bit, you can definitely see that there's a bit of a blue tint still in some of the sections that are gonna glow, but I think that that's okay, and I got a funny feeling it's actually going to probably rinse off a little bit during my rinsing process here. The fade from the blue to the purple actually turned out a lot better than I expected, especially now that the dye has dried off. You can see in the back here, this gray dye, subtle vibes, but still makes that white pop off just a little bit more. I personally am a huge fan of the colors. Really, really excited to see what happens once we rinse them off. I'm hoping that some of this purple that's in this glow in the dark section up at the top will rinse out, as well as some of the blue in this glow in the dark section at the bottom. Coming over to the medial aspects, a little bit more of the bleeding with the dye. A little bit more heavy handed with the dye, unfortunately, in this section, but it still looks pretty good. The last thing that I gotta do right now dye up these laces. This is the last component to this project right now. I think it's about time that we gave them the proper treatment so then that way they can match the kicks just right. Let's get down to it. We're about to dye these laces up proper. 
I decided to go for a splatter effect on the laces. So I took a toothbrush and kind of flicked the paint onto the laces to try and get the best splatter effect that I possibly could. After I was done dyeing the laces, it was time to give the sneakers their first rinse. You want to use as hot as water as possible to try and allow the dye to set into place. The hotter the water you can stand, the better. That's why a lot of times when you're dyeing articles of clothing, you want to run them through a hot wash cycle. All right, as you can see, I actually only rinsed off the right shoe of all the excess dye. What I noticed was happening is that a lot of the kind of deep color that I had achieved using the dye rinsed out and it made the color a lot lighter, which isn't necessarily an issue because I can always add more dye to deepen the color on the shoes, but it means more work for me. We're gonna take a quick look to compare the right shoe, which has been rinsed, to the left shoe, which has not been rinsed. So taking a look between the right shoe and the left shoe, they both still look pretty good. And one of the things that I will say I'm pretty amped up about is the fact that the dye actually rinsed out of the glow in the dark portion. You can also tell that the blue color is a lot lighter on the shoe that I rinsed versus the shoe that I did not rinse. I actually really like that deep color of blue there. So I think that I'm probably gonna have to re-dye the right shoe to try and get a little bit of a deeper blue coloration. You can see that the purple washed out and pretty much all of the blue dye that was mixed in with the purple dye actually got rinsed out as well. And you can't really tell that that blue is supposed to fade into the purple. The right shoe is definitely going to have to be retouched up with dye to say the least. What I'm going to do is let the dye in the left shoe sit for a little bit longer and see if that has any sort of beneficial effect for making it a little bit of a deeper hue for me. So then that way I don't have to do quite as much work next time. I just have to let the shoes sit and let the color set for a little bit longer. I'm not upset with the way that this right shoe looks. I just really prefer for the deeper color blue. Because I was trying to get the sneakers as dark as I could, it was important to try and set the dye as much as possible on both shoes. So I gave them a second rinse with the hottest water that I possibly could stand. I even allowed the sneakers to sit in a hot water bath several times over the course of several minutes so that the colors could set as best as possible. These Yeezys have now officially been washed out with a whole bunch of water to get rid of any sort of excess dye. They're looking pretty good. I actually really, really like them. I am pumped that I went through and did a dye on them because they actually look way better than where we started off, in my personal opinion. Let's take a quick look. See the front there, really nice light blue that kind of fades into a darker blue as we get towards the middle of the shoe. Midsoles and the medial portions of the shoe looking pretty good, other than this kind of dye stain down the side of the midsole, which isn't awful, but it was a little bit unfortunate. Com coming along the lateral aspect of the right shoe here, you can see that nice gradient as we move towards the back of the shoe. The light blue fading into a gray through purple. Again, a little bit of dye on the midsole there, which kind of discolored it slightly, but it's really on the top portion near the upper. Really pumped with the way that these things turned out. They're looking pretty good, if you ask me. What I gotta do now is reload up the shoe tree in here to make sure that I don't get any dye just seeping through the shoes. Uh, we got some towels that are going to absorb any sort of excess dye. I'm going to re-dye some of the eyelets where the shoelaces go into to try and see if I can get a little bit of a darker color because I actually really, really liked that look. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and hopefully that will be the last application of dye that I will need for this pair before they are at their final product. During my second dyeing process, I was a lot more specific as to where I added the colors. This was just a smaller portion of the shoe that I dyed. Now as I went to rinse this portion, I actually chose to use some sneaker cleaner and some RIT whitener and brightener. One of the reasons that I aimed to do this was because when I actually washed my test shirt for all of the dyes, I noticed that the color actually changed quite a bit when there was detergent added to it. So I figured that if I washed using some sneaker cleaner and some RIT whitener and brightener, that would actually help me to bring out the true colors of the dye and also show how much excessive dye was still on the sneakers. You can see that during this process, I actually lost a lot of the color. And I believe that the material was completely saturated and could probably no longer accept any more dye. 
You can see that there's a very substantial difference between the beginning and the end product, but it actually still looked pretty cool afterwards and caused for a really nice blend of the colors. Here we are at the final reveal. My Yeezy 380 calcite glows have officially been dyed and transformed. Not your typical calcite glows right here. Let's take a closer look and talk about the final product. But overall, honestly, I'm really happy with the product that I got here. I was kind of hoping that the colors would be a bit deeper, so I'm a little bit bummed out at how light they are, but honestly, I am really, really pumped at the results. I was worried that I was gonna fuck up a pair of $250 Yeezys. However, I think that these things came out really fucking nice and quite honestly, I can't wait to dye my next pair because this is a really fun process. It was really time consuming for sure, but I think now that I understand the knit pattern on the Yeezy 380s, I can probably do it a little bit quicker the next round. And seeing that I kind of have a technique down, I think that I'll probably be able to do it a little bit more quickly but for now that's case closed on this pair a yeezy 380 calcite glows let me know what you guys think in the comments did you like these did you not like them definitely would love to hear some of you guys' feedback so make sure if you're enjoying this so far you subscribe to the channel and uh make sure that you keep your eyes open because there's a lot of projects in the works and i think that you guys are really going to enjoy some of the stuff that you're seeing coming off the channel soon take care appreciate you coming through I'm out of here. For anyone wondering if these Yeezys still glow after I dyed them. Yeah, these bitches still glow. What? Like none never even happened to them. Well, that about does it for my dye of these Yeezy 380 Calcite Glows. It was a really fun process and I actually really enjoyed my first customization and I'm even more happy that I did not mess up this pair of kicks. I can't wait to put them on feet so you'll just have to wait to see what it looks like in the near future.